Hello, it's Ashley here. We're gonna get started uh, with our first um, tutorial. Uh, but before we do that, we need to learn a little bit about Illustrator, the layout, the tools, some of the workflow items, so that you can work efficiently. Let's start with our workspace. So you should have your computer with access to the internet and Adobe Illustrator in front of you. I highly recommend using a mouse uh, it's a lot easier to kind of create things as opposed to using the trackpad, but that's up to you. And then have a notebook handy uh, with pen and paper for sketches, for ideas, so forth. You're going to need all of this throughout the course. So I hope you got a chance to watch the video on Adobe Illustrator. It's by far my favorite software for creating imagery, incorporating text, building posters, or other designs. I've used it in the past on logo design, web design, product design, and so forth. So that's why we're going to start with Adobe Illustrator. So let's get started by looking at the layout. All right, so let's start. Uh, we've clicked on Adobe Illustrator, opened it up, and we're at this window. This is the start page. This has recent files that you might have been working in. So I use Adobe Illustrator a lot, so I have tons of tons of files at the ready. Here's some quick scaled items, you know, for your iPhone or just a basic letterhead at the ready. But what you'll want to do is when you start the next project is you'll go here, you'll create new. You don't have to worry about doing this now. Just follow along. Make sure you're acquainting yourself with where everything is. You'll notice here this is just again typical sizes. Mine have sizes I've used in the past. To the right are your presets. You're going to want to make note of a few of the measurement devices. So we have inches and points and pixels. The most popular ones you're going to encounter are pixels and inches. Inches are for print, pixels are for web. I'm going to go with inches real quick. That way I can say, okay, eight and a half by 11 is typical size. Orientation is right here. I can designate how many artboards or how many canvases are available. And then there's advanced settings here, but I'm not gonna worry too much about that. I just wanna set up a standard size and hit create. So as it loads, we'll take note of what's on our artboard here. So this is the artboard. This is the document window, number four. But let's start with the application bar. So the application bar is across the top, and it's by default it contains kind of just some of the application controls, uh, the minimize, close, and expand options, um, and also some menu items that allow you to customize text or shapes, depending on what you're working on. The panels are very important. They're over here. So they're going to be where you modify your work. Certain panels are displayed by default and you can display any panel by going to window and choosing from the window menu. So right now we just have property selected. So if I wanted to start messing with aligning things, you'll notice that the align panel comes forth and the pathfinder. So if you need to see a specific panel, you're going to always go to window panel. That's going to allow you to customize shapes you've already built. Now if you want to build something, you're going to start actually in your tools panel to the left here. You'll notice that there are several tools. It looks very similar to Photoshop and some of the tools in Photoshop, if you're aware, are in here. They're just used slightly differently. You'll see the tools panel. They have a uh, direct selection tool, a selection tool, whether it's your type tool, your shape building tool, or some warp tools, everything's going to be there. We've already started to address the document window. So the document window is right here. It's this whole space where your project is. You can actually put imagery off and on what we call your artboard. So your artboard can be changed as easily as just by selecting it or applying numbers to it and so forth in the tools panel a little little bit and then lastly the status bar so down here sorry, let me condense that slightly you'll see 
that it shows you the scale options, uh, information, and navigation controls as you move about. The actual tools panel right here. So to the left on this tools panel, you'll notice what's automatically selected is the selection tool. The selection tool allows you to grab grouped items or similar items that you've placed together. For instance, it's going to just allow me to grab um, this body of text. Now when I have a lot going on in a composition, it'll allow me to grab specific things. So say I've built a few shapes, start by building a few polygons. I'm going to assign, assign a color to it just so you can see. Um, let's build a different shape. Let's do rectangle. All I'm doing is clicking and dragging to create the shape. If I want a specific shape like a square, I'll hold shift and that will keep it constrained to a square form. Let me assign a different color. And then we'll do a circle. So as you notice, I'm building this all off my artboard. That's what's great, like I've mentioned, is everything can be built and then placed on the artboard. Like, we don't need this anymore. All we're talking about is the tools panel. So what I'll go ahead and do is go to type tool. I'm going to erase all this. So I'm going to select it all. Just do tools panel. Now I'm going to grab all my shapes by clicking and dragging. It's great. It selects them all together. I'm going to put them here. So what I've just done is selected, I've built shapes, and I've used the type tool. The type tool, right, allows you to say, by Ashley Taylor. It allows you to add text. Um, by holding shift along this bracket, you can make the type bigger, or you can adjust it here. So if you want a specific type size, like 72 point, it's a very popular size. Um, you can go ahead and adjust it here. So again, this is just a brief overview. Uh, when we start to build things, you'll see, you know, exactly why we we need to do it, uh, you know, and, and so forth. As we build things, you'll see uh, how we we'll use all these settings. Um, so now that I have three shapes being built, say I want to customize these shapes a little bit more. I can start and select and, and change items with the direct selection tool. Remember, the selection tool allowed me, allows me to grab the item, but the direct selection tool allows me to get more specific. I can actually grab a point and change just the point to maneuver. I can even go into the corner here and I can round that shape out. It's a really unique, interesting feature um, that Adobe Illustrator unveiled just a couple years ago. Uh, if I need to undo anything, Command-Z or Control-Z or Edit, Undo Move will allow me to go back to the original image. Say I need an actual specific shape um, that I can't build just by using a circle. I can use the pen tool and I can actually customize that shape. By clicking and holding, I can get a curve and so forth. So now I have that specific shape that I need. I can go down here, say my artboard's too small, I can expand the artboard. Again, I can go back up here to my direct selection tool, say I need to change and round out some forms through talking. I'm not sure what I'm creating here, but I'm just trying to show you what you can do as you build a shape. We'll see what this becomes by the end of the video. <laughs> Use the pen tool. Um, also within the pen tool, I advise you to go ahead and explore. This allows you to add points within to make more changes. The curvature tool allows you to just draw curves. It's a lot easier to work with if you're doing specific curve shapes and so forth.
type, we've already gone over the type. The line tool allows you to actually create line segments by clicking and dragging. Shapes, again, you can create any type of shapes, even a star. A star, like many of these options, you can create how many points of that star by just clicking, typing, okay, I want a nine-pointed star, and you have a star. So right now you notice it has no properties, it's got no fill, or no, it has no fill or no stroke. I can go in here, change again, I can change the stroke, and now I have a star. I can click and shift and hold it and put it on top of things, so I'll go ahead and put it on top of that. Wow, very, very bright, so I might bring the contrast down. There we go. That allow you to shape them and erase. Uh, we have rotate tools. Within here we have reflect tools. Uh, scale and shift. So one of my favorite things is using the shear tool. Clicking this, shear, allow you to really distort and transform an object. So maybe we'll try to make this look a little bit like something. With tool, uh, you can warp things even more. So just by selecting them, you can push, get a little bit more customization happening. The puppet warp tool is quite fascinating. It allows you to find an area and change it. It's really quite uh, an interesting tool that I haven't used enough of yet. Um, but it allows you to add a point and start me messing with it. It's great for text. So say I want to warp this text. First I'll expand it to make it into a shape, which we'll go into later. But then I can actually start to mess with it by adding points depending on how big the size is. I can really start doing some weird things um, that you it took longer to make, longer to do back back before all this. Uh, shape Builder Perspective Tool, uh, so you're not really, you don't really need this yet. Um, these items, gradients, allow you to add gradients to a tool. Eyedropper is great for, say you've created this, you've found that I really like this color and you want to capture that, all you need to do is use the eyedropper tool. It will actually sample that. It will do the same for type. So say you not sure what you did or you just need a quick sample of a typeface like okay I really like this typeface here it'll allow you to sample it and it'll change it's a beautiful tool I use it quite a bit right here is the artboard tool it allows you to change and adjust or duplicate the actual artboard you work on all you need to do is go here and create a new artboard. You can even duplicate the similar artboard you have here by selecting option. Say you don't want to make any changes, you want to keep it original, you can just duplicate it and work on it here. We go into cutting tools, slicing tools. This hand tool here allows you to move about the composition. Zoom in tool here allows you to zoom in. Um, I recommend using a keyboard shortcut of control plus or control minus. You might be aware of this shortcut. It will save you a lot of time. And then again, we've already seen the fill and stroke tool. So say you have a shape and you want to change the color of the fill, you can. If you want to add a stroke to it, you can do the same thing. So now it has a stroke and a fill. If you want to remove that stroke, you can easily go down here and hit none with the object selected and it will remove that. So that's just a basic introduction to the tool panel here. Again, not sure what this became, <laughs> but I hope that helped. So here's an example of an image I've worked on in the past. You see the workflow, you see items off, 
off of the artboard. I even have all the color swatches I've used and all the graphics. You see they go off the page. These are items I might not have used, but it's a great example of the workflow of Adobe Illustrator. That design was for the Women's World Cup for the American Outlaws, the supporter group of the United States national team. It was printed on banners, shirts, and even on cups, which you might have saw in the video earlier. So as you can see, what you do in Illustrator can be realized just about in any form, whether it's web content, digital content, or print form, eh, like a cup for your beverage. So um, I look forward to seeing what you guys create in this class. Until the next tutorial, I'll see you soon.